Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another transparent watercolor. This is a 7 by 10 inch transparent watercolor of a jumping spider on a peony. Um, a lot of people aren't such fans of spiders, but uh, this has a lot of flower in it. It's probably 95% flower and maybe only 5% spider. So that's not so bad if you don't like spiders. Think of it as a flower painting. Um, I started this one by transferring the just the main lines of the sketch onto the paper and then I pre-wet it after frisketing off the spider and I applied a light wash of the pink. Hit that with the hair dryer to lock it in and then I started going about glazing and putting in more washes to build up the depth of color. And as I did this, I would uh, kind of mix my colors and then hit it with the hair dryer, locking it in uh, as I went. And most of the color, the base color for this was quinacridone magenta, and then I would go in with some uh, purples and uh, some, in some cases, some blues to kind of start dropping in the darks. And you can see some of the ultramarine on the palette to the right that I was using for mixing in with those uh, purples and the magentas to kind of add some depth. And so a lot of this was done with just many light glazes of color and then as those overlap it gives the uh, appearance of a lot of depth and uh, kind of the crinkles on the, uh, on the petals of the peony as it goes behind the spider. I tend to do when I when I do paintings of flowers, uh, they seem to always be uh, in macro settings as opposed to uh, just painting a flower straight out, which is different. They kind of take on a different form and they kind of become more abstractions rather than just a, uh, a straight illustration of a flower, which is kind of fun. And pretty much all the work on the flowers was done with a uh, sharp number six round brush. That worked well. And you can see how much blue I'm putting in in those shadow areas to kind of build that depth. And some of those cools made for kind of a relief against those magenta colors. One disadvantage to having the frisket is that you uh, kind of are balancing tones off of this, this kind of yellow color in the middle. Um, and that can be, uh, you kind of have to keep in mind that that's not going to be the color of the actual um, piece in the end. And you have to think about that, balancing that where it actually will be as opposed to the tones that are on the page. Uh, that's one huge disadvantage of frisket. The other thing, I'm always trying to get the frisket off the paper as soon as possible, so as I work a background, I, I don't know, I always kind of feel a little bit of a rush to get it done. The longer you leave the frisket on the page, um, it can damage the paper if it's on there too long. So you can see how many layers it takes to, to build that depth. It's not something you accomplish in two or three passes, at least the way I work it. Um, I tend to be putting in just dozens of layers to build those really intense saturated colors. And compared to my photo reference, I definitely added a lot of these uh, purpley tones, um, the bluish kind of colors too, that weren't really in the, the actual photo reference that I took. The, uh, I, I thought it would make it a stronger painting if I brought those in to have something instead of just this sea of uh, plain pinks. If I just had the pinks, it would start to look, I, I think, overly monochromatic. And I think bringing in those uh, blues and purples 
ends up giving it more depth and it still reads as you know a sea of pink but I don't think it suffers from being as boring as if it was just all painted with just different shades of pink especially since later I'm going to be putting that spider in and that's going to have some color I think here I'd switched over to a number two um, brush for part of it just to get some of the sharp edges and um, make sure that all those separate well from each other and that they weren't uh, ratty from uh, the larger number six. My camera lens got kind of smudged here, so bear with me. So once I got the actual background done, I peeled it off the frisket and started just applying the 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 paint to the spider. And uh, you can see my photo reference behind there. And it is fairly just pinks and whites. Um, and so introducing those purples, I think, helped. So here's a close-up of the actual spider painting. The spider was relative to painting all those petals very quick. And this was all done with uh, mostly with a tiny little brush. I think that's a 10 aught. As you get into the macro world, it's interesting because you, you start seeing that these spiders and uh, insects, as you draw them, actually are somewhat transparent. And so you're painting with some of those pink tones mm -hmm. That are actually go you're seeing through the spider, uh, which is kind of crazy, but that's how it works. And uh, it helps this guy kind of fade into the background, like he's lurking in there to bring in those pinkish tones and a little bit of those purpley things on the abdomen. The actual spider was really pretty quick to paint. Just lots of little hairy things and get the overall shape and then start dropping in the hairs. There you go, a signature and a couple more details to pick away at. And it was all but finished. So there you go, a 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. Um, thanks for watching. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.